The Lord Jesus said, For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. During the last days, God has once again become flesh in the east, China. In 1991, Almighty God, Christ of the Last Days, formally took up His ministry. Since then, Almighty God has expressed millions of words and carried out the work of judgment beginning from the house of God. God's sheep hear His voice. The people of various sects and denominations who loved the truth and yearned for God's appearance have recognized that Almighty God's words are the truth and that this is the voice of God. They believed that Almighty God was the return of the Lord Jesus, and one by one, they came before Almighty God. The appearance and work of Almighty God sparked panic in the CCP. The CCP issued numerous secret documents and mobilized the armed police and army to maniacally oppress and eradicate the church. The whole of mainland China rained blood. Dark clouds descended, and there was universal outrage and indignation. Today, the Christians of all the house churches, particularly those of the Church of Almighty God, are experiencing even more brutal and bloody persecution by the CCP government. These Christians' bloodshed and loss of life are like a song of victory over the forces of Satan and tell the grisly tale of Chinese Christians' persecution. Spring Festival of 2015 was just around the corner, at a time of happiness when families reunite. A tragedy occurred in the grounds of a rental apartment block in some county of Hunan province. The block's other tenants had already returned home for the holidays. The only remaining tenant had died unexpectedly. The deceased was a woman approximately 30 years old. She was lying face up on the ground, and there was a pool of blood under her head. A handcuffed woman was squatting in the courtyard, her face streaked with tears. There was animated discussion among the crowd of onlookers. Who was this dead woman? And who was the handcuffed woman? Was she the killer? What happened between them? How did the deceased die? The tragic state of the deceased provoked unease among the onlookers. Coming before Chinese New Year, the murder case cast a pall over the happy atmosphere. Oh, 
别急，慢慢说。刚才警察打电话，告诉崇之叔说小兰跳窗自杀了。The Song family was deeply shocked by the sudden news of Xiaolan's death. Their hopes for a happy family reunion during Chinese New Year were completely shattered. They simply couldn't accept that she had killed herself. Harboring strong suspicions, Mrs. Song and Xiaolan's sister hurried to the funeral parlor. On the way to the funeral parlor, Mrs. Song thought back to when her daughter had left home. 28-year-old Song Xiaolan was a Christian of the Church of Almighty God. She was of good humanity and a true believer in God. Mrs. Song didn't believe it for a moment. Her daughter had only rented the room to do some work for the church. Nothing had been out of the ordinary recently. How could she suddenly throw herself out of the window? Seeing that the girl in the mortuary refrigerator really was her daughter, Mrs. Song broke down in tears. Distraught, Mrs. Song collapsed on the floor. His face impassive, Mr. He, the officer in charge of the case, said nothing. How did Song Xiaolan die? And who was the woman the police took away? Dao Qian. 你和宋小兰什么关系？你为什么会住在她家？说，在地上活出神爱的形象，如彼得一样真心的爱神。感谢神，现在教会能让我尽这个本分，这是神的爱。我一定要好好在这本分上去满足神，环抱神的爱。是啊。我和小兰是朋友，昨天来找她，聊晚了就住下了。哼，你不老实交代，别以为我们不知道。说，你们说的我听不懂，我什么也不知道。
再也不知道是小兰，我们就说宋小兰是你害死的。你们说是我害死的，有什么证据？如果是我害死的，我怎么可能等着你们来抓？Since Song Xiaolan's death was not connected to Xiao Qin, who was the real killer? What really happened? Xiao Qin didn't have a clue what was happening. Song Xiaolan got up in the morning to go to the toilet. How could she suddenly end up dead in the courtyard? Song Xiaolan's family were also disturbed by the cause of her death. In the funeral parlor, Officer He, who knew the Song family, was relentless in casting the blame on Mrs. Song. He said that Song Xiaolan's death was connected to her faith. This made Mrs. Song suspicious. Officer He took out a photo and asked her to identify it. Mrs. Song looked at the photo and instantly recognized it as Xiao Qin. Mrs. Song and Xiao Qin were both Christians in the Church of Almighty God. They knew each other very well. She knew that Xiao Qin couldn't have harmed her daughter. What made her most suspicious was, in the morning, the police had said her daughter had thrown herself out of the window, but now they were saying she had been killed. 
What was going on? Mrs. Song had been completely bewildered. But what Officer He said next inadvertently revealed something. The talk of secret monitoring confirmed Mrs. Song's suspicions. There was no way her daughter killed herself. There must be something unknown about her sudden death. After rushing to the funeral parlor, the Song family was consumed with anguish when they saw the body. They didn't believe for a second that Song Shaolan, who was so open and full of life, could have thrown herself out of a window. In particular, the deep wound to her head couldn't have been caused by a fall. Officer He's conflicting explanation also heightened the Song family's suspicions. The police were covering up the truth. To find proof, at 3 p.m. on this day, members of the Song family hurried to the scene of Song Shaolan's death. Seeing two pools of blood on the ground and the outline of the body, Mr. Song felt like his heart was going to break. Shaolan's husband, too, couldn't stop the tears from streaming down his face. Her room had been turned upside down by the police, and anything of any worth had been taken away. When they saw the window, the family were incensed. It felt like they were being strung along. All the windows in the room had metal bars in them. There was no way anyone could jump out. The police's claim that Song Shaolan had jumped to her death was utter nonsense. After seeing this, the Song family headed to the County Public Security Bureau, full of suspicion. They confronted Mr. Bin, the captain of the local criminal police group. Ah, 
The captain had unexpectedly given a different account of Song Xiaolan's death. Xiaolan, how can he fly with the Dilly Wing? This person, if he doesn't want to live, he will have any idea. This is what we've seen a lot. Earlier, the police explicitly said Song Xiaolan jumped out a window. Next, Officer He said she had been killed by Zhao Qin. And now, Captain Bin was saying that Song Xiaolan had jumped off the building after drinking pesticide. Why were the CCP police giving conflicting accounts of Song Xiaolan's death? The police's stalling and apathy provoked a deep anger in the Song family. Song Xiaolan's name is Qian Dang Shen. He died. He died. He died. He died. He died. He died. After the police's repeated lies, the Song family came to a painful decision. They had to find out how she died. To prove that Song Xiaolan hadn't drunk pesticide, they asked for an autopsy on her body. At 6 p.m. that day in the dissecting room, Song Xiaolan's father and husband discovered a large bruise on her left thigh and a small bruise on her left calf. She had clearly been beaten before she died. Song Xiaolan's husband also discovered something else. There was a large rip in the outside of his wife's right trouser leg. His wife had always kept herself very clean. The dirt and damage to her trousers likely happened around her death. The Song family didn't realize at the time that the damage to the trousers was a clue that proved Song Xiaolan had been killed. The forensic doctors first opened her chest and abdomen for an examination and sampling. When the gastric juice was sampled, Song Xiaolan's father and husband couldn't smell any pesticide. There was nothing to substantiate the police's claim that Song Xiaolan had drunk pesticide. After the autopsy, the County Public Security Bureau kept delaying the release of the autopsy report. Over and over, the Song family went and asked for the results. But the police were contemptuous and domineering throughout, using every manner of excuse to stall and delay. This string of lies gave the family the feeling that the police were deliberately hiding the truth. And they wouldn't give them a key piece of evidence like the autopsy report easily. The Song family was plunged into utter despair. It was a chilly morning on March 2nd. The air was unusually cold. The Song family anxiously returned to the scene of Song Xiaolan's death to pour over every nook and corner. This time, they found a lot. Although it had already been over half a month, and someone had already scrubbed the ground clean, the specks of blood had seeped into the concrete ground. They were still clearly visible. They had become stains that couldn't be washed away. The spots of blood were silent, yet they also seemed to be saying something. The specks of blood 
seemed to be leading the family ever closer to the truth. The police had said Song Shaolan had drunk pesticide and then jumped to her death. But her father couldn't accept this explanation. If his daughter had drunk pesticide, why, right before she died, would she have put the empty bottle back beneath her bed? Then jumped to her death. Added to that, there wasn't the faintest smell of pesticide during the autopsy. Song Shaolan's father was certain that his daughter hadn't drunk pesticide. So how did she really die?
Visiting the scene of Song Shaolun's death left her family certain that she had been beaten unconscious and dragged to the roof by someone. And then they threw her off the building to fabricate the scene of her death. Having worked this out, the family had another cause for suspicion. Who had really killed Song Shaolun? And why did they want to kill her? Why did the police keep lying, protecting the murderer? Incensed, members of the Song family once again returned to the County Public Security Bureau to demand Song Shaolan's autopsy report. But seeing them, Captain Bin and others slipped quietly away. On March 15th, Mr. Song received an unexpected call from the County Public Security Bureau, saying that they were going to provide the family with a video from the scene of Song Shaolan's death. The video released by the police once more exposed their lies. Previously, Captain Bin had said the empty bottle was found under Song Shalan's bed. Now they were saying it was found in the bathroom. One of the onlookers at the time was from the same town as Mr. Song and told him that when Song Shaolan died, she was clearly lying on her back on the ground. But in the police video, she was face down. At the time, the police made no effort to save Song Shaolan. But in the video, there was a shot of an ambulance driving off. These and other questionable details proved that the video which was supposedly shot at the scene of Song Shaolan's death had been entirely edited together from clips. The police had made a fake video for blinding the family, and they'd done a shoddy job of it. It made the family members even more angry. In their conflicting accounts, the police kept changing the cause of Song Shaolan's death. It had revealed their shamelessness of their many lies and blatant deception. <laughs> the police had no answer to the questions the Song family shouted loud and clear. 
But they kept coming up with excuses. There was no end to their sophistries. They did their utmost to avoid blame and even continued to concoct shameless lies. The family was exasperated, and they also felt a deep sense of helplessness. They sought help from a relative who worked for the government who replied straight away that he had a contact in the Public Security Bureau that he would talk to. Ah, Nishua, 是这么回事？小康，何时？哎，大嫂，兵队长是怎么说的？到底是什么情况？你跟我们说说。哎，我了解到了，咱们家小人是因为信权的神，被他们打死了。啊！这是被打死的！共产党怎么随便打死人呢
by the knowledge that she would never see her mother again. She couldn't stop herself from crying every time she thought of her mom. The young son didn't know his mother had already died and cried out for her every day. <laughs> Song Shaolan's mother was also left desolated. Every day, tears ran down her face. Her body grew increasingly frail. After her daughter died, she started having frequent fainting fits. <laughs> <laughs> the Song family refused to accept that the CCP had killed Song Shaolan simply because she believed in God and had been carrying out her duty. The pain of losing a loved one could never be extinguished. On April 4th, Mrs. Song once more returned to the apartment where her daughter had died. In a secret place, she found her daughter's notebook. In it was an unsent letter. <laughs> Looking at her daughter's familiar handwriting, Mrs. Song felt a strong longing for Shaolan. The pain of losing her daughter once again filled her eyes with tears. She could almost see her daughter. Ma, it's God's love that brought me to God. Faith is truly the path of the life of life. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Ma,最近本分有点忙。我不在家的时候，是您替我带着两个孩子，让您操心了。我以后会好好尽本分，环抱神的爱。